bones and joints of the hand, let's see what they're called. Here are the eight carpal bones, and here are the five metacarpals. Each finger has a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx. The thumb just has two phalanges, a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx. The joints of the hand have long names. The joints between the carpus and the metacarpals are the carpometacarpal joints. The joints between the metacarpals and the proximal phalanges are the metacarpophalangeal joints. The joints between the phalanges are the interphalangeal joints, proximal and distal. We'll often refer to these joints as CMC joints, MP joints, and IP joints for short. Carpal bones in the previous section. Let's look at their overall shape. There are two bony projections on each side. On the ulnar side, the pisiform bone, and this part of the hamate. On the radial side, the tubercle of the scaphoid, and the crest of the trapezium. With these projections, the bones of the carpus form the base and the side walls of a space called the carpal tunnel. Here's how the carpus looks in the living body. The radiocarpal and midcarpal joints are hidden by the heavy capsular ligaments. Here are those four projections again, the tubercle of the scaphoid, the crest of the trapezium, the pisiform, and the hook of the hamate. And here's the carpal tunnel, still without its roof. Carpal metacarpal joints. The bases of the four finger metacarpals, tightly packed together, articulate here with the distal row of carpal bones. The base of the first metacarpal, the one for the thumb, articulates separately here with the trapezium. These four carpometacarpal joints only allow a small amount of movement. The fifth metacarpal is the most mobile. The fourth is less so. The third hardly moves at all. And neither does the second. When the CMC joints are flexed, the metacarpal heads lie in a curve. This strong ligament is the deep transverse metacarpal ligament. It keeps the metacarpal heads of the four fingers from spreading apart. As it crosses each MP joint, the ligament is continuous with a structure that we'll meet shortly, the palmar plate. Since it doesn't connect to the first metacarpal, the ligament doesn't prevent movement of the thumb away from the hand. The proximal and middle phalanges are flattened on their flexor aspects. The flexor tendons run along here. The sheath that surrounds the flexor tendons is attached to these ridges. The tip of the distal phalanx is flattened. The fibrous pulp of the fingertip is attached here. The bed of the fingernail is attached here. Now let's look at the metacarpophalangeal joint, the MP joint. It's the joint at which the finger becomes separate from the hand. We'll take the other fingers away so that we can see it from all sides. The articular surface of the metacarpal head is curved in two planes, from side to side and from front to back. The base of the proximal phalanx has a concave articular surface that's also curved in two planes. The shape of the bones allows a wide range of flexion and extension at the MP joints. It also allows a range of side to side movement that's greater when the joints are extended less when they're flexed. We'll see why that is in a minute. Let's see what the joint looks like in the living body. The MP joint has a capsule that's loose on the back to allow the joint to flex. On the front, the capsule thickens remarkably into a tough piece of fibrocartilage, the palmar plate, also called the palmar ligament. The palmar plate moves along with the proximal phalanx when the joint flexes. Here's the palmar plate incised to show how thick it is. As we'll see, some important structures are attached to the palmar plate or merge with it. One of them we've seen already is here. Here, we've removed most of the joint capsule 
so that we can see the two massive collateral ligaments which hold the MP joint together. The collateral ligaments run obliquely from the back of the metacarpal head to the front of the base of the proximal phalanx. The collateral ligaments are loose when the joint is extended, but when it's flexed, they become tight. So when the joint is extended, side-to-side -side movement can occur readily, but when the joint is flexed, the tightness of the ligaments prevents side-to-side -side movement. The proximal and distal IP joints are very much alike. They're different from the MP joints in that they only allow flexion and extension. The head of the phalanx is curved mainly from front to back, with a slight depression in the middle. The base of the adjoining phalanx has a corresponding curve to it. The capsule of an IP joint is much like that of an MP joint, but the collateral ligaments are different in that they're equally tight in flexion and in extension. Carpometacarpal joint is the joint which gives the thumb its special position and a great deal of its special mobility. Let's take off the metacarpal heads to see the joint surfaces. Here's the first CMC joint. It sits in and at an angle to them. Because of this, the thumb and its metacarpal lie in front of the fingers and their metacarpals. Because of the angle of the carpometacarpal joint, the thumb faces not forward as the fingers do, but sideways across the hand. The articular surface on the trapezium is curved in two planes, from side to side and from back to front. The base of the first metacarpal is curved in the same way. The shape of the joint surfaces enables the first metacarpal to move in this plane and in this plane. We'll name those movements in a minute, but first let's look briefly at the other two joints of the thumb. The MP joint of the thumb is unlike the finger MP joints. It's much more like an interphalangeal joint. It permits only flexion and extension. On its flexor aspect, there are two tiny sesamoid bones, which are embedded in the joint capsule. The one interphalangeal joint of the thumb is just like the IP joints of the fingers. Now, let's go back to the CMC joint and see how the first metacarpal moves and what the movements are called. Movement away from the second metacarpal is called abduction. Movement toward it is adduction. Movements at right angles to this axis are called